Okay, welcome back to James's Repair Shop. Uh, back on the uh, sprucing up the old F350. Today, uh, working on the mud flap brackets and uh, moving on with a little practice. So I'll bring you in close. I have some plans for the, for the mud flap brackets. So I'll bring you off the tripod. I'll, I'll bring you down off the tripod. Show you what I have in mind. Okay, this is what I was thinking. So I kind of have it rough sitting there how I want it to look. It's a little low, uh, but that's okay. It's not, it's, they're not dragging on the ground. The next owner can adjust them to where he wants. So what I thought, well, first I'll explain why I'm back this far. I tried to put them up in this area here, but it's quite a bit more work. And the, if I put a bracket right across, the fuel tank will be in the way. And if I just put a short bracket there, I don't know how well supported it will be. So what I have is some of this uh, two inch stock here, it's a hitch stock, it's going to be certainly strong enough. And uh, I split this length in half and, and one side go to one side and one side go to the other, right and left. And then if I figure if I, uh, so this, I'll start here, so this distance down to here is the same distance as from here to the end. I measured it down so if I split this fold it in and make a 90 degree angle I can utilize these two bolt holes that are here for the bumper in this section right here. So that's what I'm up to. So I'm going to double check the measurements again before I do it. Even if it uh, even if it's a little bit lower, like say it's flush with here, which I believe I measured all the way from here down. Well, let's get a tape and, and try it, make sure. Okay, I got a measuring tape. I don't know if you can hear me, I think I have my hand over the mic. There we go, I have a measuring tape. And what I have measured out here is seven and a half inches. Yeah, and seven and a half inches down. So in theory, if I do it like I'm talking, cut it that wedge out, bring this down, weld this back together as a 90, and then bolt it onto the side like this. That should be a pretty darn strong bracket with bolts, go, bolts going right through the tube and into there. So I would need like two inch, so, so I need three inch bolts for sure. No problem. And then that'll give me a nice uh, place to hang these lights off of as well. <clears throat> I'm not too worried about the height of the the flap, it's not dragging, but if I decide I don't like it, so I'll just, I'll, uh, these are kind of rough anyway, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. What I'm going to do is uh, I'll just put a couple of bolts down through these, and through these brackets that are over here. They held it, they were on there for years, so obviously they'll hold, but if I don't, I can just move up the, I can unbolt it and move the rubber up. And that's that. That's what I plan on doing with it. So I have two of them to make, one for each side, a right and left. Man, I figured I'm hope, uh, made. I hope I don't make them backwards. <laughs> anyway, just fun around. So I better get at it.
Okay, there's one built. Holy guacamole. I think everything went wrong, including my uh, cutting abilities. Welding abilities aren't that great either by the looks of it. Holy snap. Couldn't see anything. I couldn't figure out why. It's because I had my old glasses on. I didn't have my new safety glasses on. Anyway, that one's done. Makes a big difference when you can actually see something. It's like, holy cow. Anyway, she's going to be okay, I think. Let's see how she looks on here. So that's kind of the idea. Hopefully the other one goes a lot smoother. Probably will because I won't be filming it. So I'll get the other one built. And uh, we'll look at mounting them. Well, that went much better. Holy cow. It took me like five minutes for this one. The other one took me a half an hour. And a lot of frustration. This one was just cut it up. I cut it on the chop saw this time. That's why. Set it at 45 and cut it. Yeah, much simpler. Did a better job. So I'm going to go with it. Looks good. So I'll get her welded up. I don't think uh, my uh, zip cut skills are up to par. Anyhow, no big deal. Moving on.
Okay. Man, that went much smoother. I got half an ocean to... Sorry, right on the mic there. Half an ocean to uh, take the other one apart and do it again. But no, I'm not going to bother. This, it's welded good enough. This is much better. What we got there? But it's, it's just a bracket. I don't think it's going to fall off. So the next step is to get some holes lined up here. If you see that or not, I got it zoomed in. Get some holes lined up with those holes in the frame and get them painted and mounted. All right. Okay, there's the two brackets made. Got holes drilled in them. I'm just going to tuck the bolts up through the back side inside the tubes. But I need to go get some bolts. So that's it. Painted up, ready to go on. Look pretty good. Okay, there's one of the mounts on the uh, mud flap mounts. Three quarter wrenches, half inch bolts. I use a washer and a mylar nut, nylon locking nut. Uh, three quarter or inch and a half bolts, half inch long. Just the inch and a half just fits up in the tube and gives you room to move it in place. So that's one on. Let's mount the other one. Okay, let's get the bolt in the tube. Pretty straightforward stuff. Not complicated. I just put it on the end of the wrench like this. Drop it down. And when it gets to the hole, grab it, pull it out. Have a washer and another nut ready to go. And we get both of them out. Now let's get her on. Hopefully I'm not standing in the, in the way of it. Pretty simple stuff. Now, you can, can't really reach it, so you kind of have to finesse it through slowly. All right. Oh, that hole's not quite big enough. Huh. All right, first of all, See to make sure the holes are big enough. The other side is fine. This one's good. That hole needs to be cleaned out a little bit. Well, give me a second. I'm going to grab the drill and I'll bore that one out a tiny bit. Give it a shot of paint. Alright, you got a drill. That one seems to be struggling. Yeah. Maybe I'll clean them both out. up inside and they can actually get on there and I got my ratcheting ratcheting wrench here which I like so the pull has to take these off you can actually get up there with a wrench which is kind of nice and make sure it's sitting fairly level. The holes in the inside are a little bit oversized.
Uh, both of these are on. Let's have a stand back and have a look. Probably should get rid of the junk of the lights coming in the door. It's hard to get them washed out pretty bad. All right, on with hanging the flaps. All right, back on the F-350 again. It's the next day. I got her sitting in the garage, left her in overnight. Got the ears put on her. I gotta get those mud flaps on now today. That's my goal is to get the mud flaps on. And I'm going to mount the, the lights, which I have sitting there. The old shop's getting pretty messy. There's not a lot of room in here when the one ton's in. So, yeah, I'll move her out. And I'm going to clean those mud flaps up and I'm going to clean that tank up. So, once the flaps are on um, and the lighting is on, I'm going to get the, build a couple straps for the tank. And that'll just leave the. Uh, Balancing the wheels for this series of uh, sprucing up the old F-350. All right, let me get her out and uh, go from there. Okay, cleaning up the mud flaps. I use this uh, LA's Totally Awesome. It's uh, I get it at the Dollarama Dollar Store or something like that. One of them, one of the local ones we have. They have about three of them around here. Uh, Thirty-two ounces, dollar twenty-five. Man, this stuff works good on rubber not perfect they say it's a degreaser I don't see it as well as a degreaser but on rubber man it takes off that road dirt really well you'll see I okay, brought one outside give you a little idea of what this stuff does a little cooler today finally which is nice looks like it's gonna rain anyway so I guess sprayed her down scrubbed her down with the LA awesome there's my brush give the brush a clean up but this stuff yeah if you want to clean up rubber this is just, look at the stuff coming off there. That's good stuff for the price. And like I said, it's not special on, uh, it doesn't work that great on, uh, I don't think for a degreaser, but it sure works well on rubber products. All right, we'll flip her over and uh, do the other side. All right, got her flipped over. I just put it in one of these spray bottles like this. This is a Princess Auto, probably Harbor Freight has them too. And I just gave her a shot. Let it sit for a minute or two, and then scrub her down, and it doesn't take much, and it's cheap anyway, so it doesn't mean you have to waste it just because it's cheap, but anyway, there it is, a little spray down, so I'll give it a, a couple seconds there to, to fester in, and get right back to you. Let's give her a scrub. This will be a quick scrub. This is the, the wheel side, so I'm not too concerned about it. I just want to make them look a little better. Hope I don't make you dizzy. You want this? But you can see how it's lifting it. It's really lifting it off nicely. There. Give her a wash, see how she looks. <clears throat> Does wonders on the brush, too. There we go. Looking good. All right, you get the idea. I'll get the other one out here and do it up. I won't, for, I won't uh, make you watch the other one being done. Yeah, and I just want to mention they give a, a list of instructions for doing uh, dilution of this. And there's the dilution chart right there, dilution scale. I use it straight, but on uh, maybe whatever you're working with, you won't need it straight. Uh, uh, undiluted, that is. So look it up. I, I recommend it. Works really well. Okay, this has turned into a bit of a sweat fest. <laughs> I got one on. Uh, I put this one on first. And I didn't like how it was sitting. And you can see where I, uh, all these holes in there, I readjusted it a couple times. I could weld them over, it doesn't matter. This is a temporary setup. But what I wanted to ta talk about is the welded seam. 
in these uh, tube steels. I don't know if you can see it in there or not, where that seam is. They don't like self-toppers very well. Where am I? Right there. That is the hardest stuff. Self-toppers won't go through that seam. Well, the ones I have won't anyway. There might be some that will. But if you're doing this to work with those tubes, welded tubes, avoid uh, the self-toppers. It's something I had forgotten about and when I built these. All I had to do, all I would have had to do was just switch these around. I would have avoided it. But uh, the other side went on fine, and then I put this side on, ran into some issues, and lowered it, and realized, well, it looks kind of stupid. Because if there's anything that will, your buddies will point out is an uneven uh, mud flap, <laughs> a crooked mud flap or an uneven mud flap. So they're getting on. I just wanted to bring that little tip up. So uh, I worked on this an extra 10, 15 minutes. And really all I had to do was switch those two around and it would have been fine. Anyhow, you live and learn. And that's mistake too because I knew that and I had forgotten. So, yeah. Welded tube, avoid it with self-toppers. Even drill bits. Man, I tried to drill them up with a drill bit. Now, I could have used the cobalts on it. But I figured, well, it's easier just to raise the raise the flap above the seam area. You can see there's where the welded seam is, so if I bring it up here, it'll be fine. Oh, there we go, back into focus again. Okay, the flaps are on. Anyhow, they're not perfect, because I can see, after I stood back, that this one here is just a little higher, and I'm sure someone will point that out. But since these are only temporary, I'm not gonna pull it off again. So now, I'm going to put the lights on her. That should go easier because there are no uh, welded seams on this side. <laughs> anyway, if I'd known it was going to run into quite that much time and effort, I would have just flipped those two around and then it would have been much simpler. Anyway, you live and learn. Learn from my mistakes is easier for you. So just remember, welded seams, don't try to drill or self-tap through them. Yeah, so I got one off a bit, but uh, anyway, I'm going to leave these tops on just for the simple fact that the next owner may need the length, and uh, they say made in the USA on them. It's kind of cool. I don't know what these cost. Never tried to buy them, but I don't suspect they're, they're super cheap. They're a nice flap. So, I'll leave the tops on. Why ruin them? I know when they were on the other truck, they needed to be all the full length just to get the coverage, so we'll leave them on. Okay, both lights are mounted. I was just working on the wiring now. One of my least favorite jobs of all this is wiring. I don't know why it's a simple thing to do, uh, but man, I just just don't like doing it. But anyway, it has to get done, so whether we follow likes it or not, got to get her done. So on we go. Okay, I'm just making up a harness for the right side. I'll show you here. And I'll poke that through the tube. So I'm just doing a little tape wrapping, which I don't mind doing that part of it. I'm not fond of the electrical work, but I don't mind this kind of satisfying, actually, wrapping the harness up with some tape. Works, uh, I don't mind it, yeah, like I said. All right, that's what I'm up to. I'll continue on. Okay, I got the wire pulled through on the right side. I just reached up inside here with these long vice grips. They come in handy for that. And uh, tuck it away, it makes a neater job. Just tuck it away, I'll leave a little slack there so it doesn't rub on that. So that's it, I'll go on the other side and then I'll bring these together in the middle. And there's the harness coming from the cab. So I'll bring them all together in the middle, and uh, actually, I think this is long enough. Yeah, be right around there somewhere. All right. All right, I'll show you something else I do with these uh, inexpensive uh, butt joint, butt connectors. I take the blue case off. I got one right there. This is what they look like inside. If you've never seen them inside, I'm sure you have, but if you haven't. So what I do is I take these casing, this casing off, get right there, 
and uh, I find a little hole. If I have to make a hole, I'll make a hole. But this is a small hole that the collar of it fits over, or it doesn't won't go through. And then I use this Allen wrench, and I just put them on like that. And it started not in the hole, otherwise it'll tip on you. So you can go like that and just push it. Oop, one hand is not good. I'll grab another one. All right, let's do this again. So you just push it down right there. So then you'll see the end. Oh, you'll see the end pop out, and then I go over the hole with it. You have to hold it because it tips. And the Allen wrench is good because you can put your your palm on it and just push a little bit until you find that hole. Not there yet because there it goes. Pop right out. See, gone onto the ground, of course. Uh, now to find another one. Anyway, that's okay because I got to make another one anyway. So let's see it. Do another one. So again, in case you missed it, put the Allen wrench on and hold it. Hard to do and still be able to see in the camera. And just push it down, and there's the end. And then find the little hole that you have that you're working with. And then you'll see it start coming through right that. There, it popped out. Caught it that time. And there you go. And then I shrink uh, wrap those. I, I do a shrink tube over them, which is the proper way anyway. Even if you're using the sleeve, you should still, you should still uh, use some shrink tube. All right, that's just a little tip that I use. Back at her. There now, three of them made. I need three for this uh, wire harness, so here you go. Easy peasy. All right. I know this is pretty basic stuff, but hey, maybe someone hasn't done it before. So anyway, I slide my, this is the wire I'm, I'm adding on. Here's the wire going to the light. And this is the wire I'm adding on. So I'll put this, the uh, shrink tube on. Mind you, that's an open end wire, so I could do that anytime, but it's a good idea, good habit to get into doing it ahead of time in case it's not open end but if it's a joint in the middle so then just slip on the little piece that I just took out of the the sleeve the, sl the shrink tube sleeve the butt joint sleeve and I use these I'm using these uh, channel lock crimpers and then I go to the one that doesn't non insulated just put it on and give her a crimp and a little tug make sure it's okay and go back on again. I don't know, hopefully I'm still in camera. Yeah, it looks like it. So then I'll set up again so it's in place. Make, twist the wires a little bit to make sure they don't fray out. Try to do this without, uh, so you can see it. So I don't get out of camera. And then shove it on and just a simple crimp, like so. And that's it. Give it a tug, it's on there tight. And I have my shrink tube now it's already there. Now I do, I am using a little torch and normally I like to use a little heat gun and stuff, but I, I only doing a couple wires, so I'm just going to go at it. So get my torch going and just go easy on this. You don't need to burn the snot out of it. And that's it. You'll see the and uh, ultimately, if you want to do a permanent job, you would use the shrink tube that has the uh, this, the adhesive inside or the uh, the glue, so it actually seals around nicely. But this is a temporary setup. I'm not going to spend the the big cabbage on the on the real high end shrink tube. This is just cheap stuff from King Tire. But that's it. That's a simple way to put on a join a wire together. So that's the yellow one done. And I'll continue on. I just like to add that I just got the brown one going here. I just like to add that this is just how I do it. Um, there's probably a thousand different ways that people people like prefer to do it, and that's fine. It's just how I do it. Um, I've also used the uh, just leave the sleeve on the butt connector, but I didn't have uh, shrink wrap that was big enough. That's why I took the sleeve out. But if you have larger shrink wrap, just leave it on, crimp it on, and cover the whole thing with shrink wrap. But I do recommend using the or shrink tube rather, not shrink wrap. I recommend using the shrink tube. Anyway, this this butt connector is big enough for two of these wires, so I'm going to join the two uh, 
the two brown wires together for the park lights. And uh, that's it, let's get her done. And I just wanted to say that uh, using the butt connectors isn't a replacement for uh, soldering. The soldering is, the, is your best bet and then shrink tube over the soldering. Uh, so yeah, I don't, I'm not trying to say that this is the best way to go. If, you, uh, if you're doing a permanent setup, you would want to solder it. Okay, I got the wiring all uh, run. Uh, it's just joined together on my power supply down here. Run 13.8 volts, drawing an uh, amp and a half. And that's just for the parking lights, parking brake lights. But that's it. I'll get the, uh, before I finish the wiring, I'm gonna put the tank in because I don't want the wiring in the way of all this area right here. So I have to run the bolts all through here and I put the straps back on. So we'll call it good for now on the wiring. Ah, she's looking all right. Got the side markers there and uh, I know it's not ideal for side markers because you can't really see them when you're passing the vehicle oncoming. So maybe I'll uh, figure something out. But I think to get this truck sold and whoever's going to buy it can get themselves home and do some work to it, it'd probably be good enough. All right, continue on with the project. I've got the uh, fuel tank, the rear fuel tank cleaned up. I mean cleaned up enough that it needs to be. It's uh, used some of that uh, LA Awesome cleaner, took the dirt right off it. It's a fuel tank after all on a one ton truck work truck so I don't think it needs to be hundred percent perfect so now I gotta build some straps there's the old uh, carrier that was in in it that was the old retainer or shield I guess you'll call it and yeah it's beyond I think it's beyond repair there's nothing left of it really so I have this galvanized steel so I think I'll cut a few straps out of that that's long enough to make if I take uh, four strips and make two straps out of four strips so wide and laminate two together that'll be strong enough more than strong enough because this isn't as thick as the original straps were this is probably like 22 gauge the original straps are like around 18 or 19 but anyway I cut four long strips with my plasma cutter and uh, once I get them bent in the shape they are I'll spot weld them so they don't move around and I because I have to spot weld the uh, brackets back on anyway or a bracket of some sort anyway that's what I'm up to well I'm thinking into the thick of it now I was gonna use a piece of galvanized steel that I had but I realized it's way too thin and doubling up still was too thin so I went out and picked up a piece of the old truck box that I had laying out in the backyard I have a bunch of it and it's the right gauge, so I'm cutting strips with the grinder. My plasma cutter died on me for some reason, but I'll figure it out in time, but I want to get this done. So <clears throat> I got a few of these strips to make. I'll end up welding some together. And then I got to chop out these brackets here on each side because uh, they're already built to, for the holes. I may as well just reuse them and I'll weld on the new pieces to them. So that's what's going on. What a mess. And I have two more of these sections like this to cut up. These were toolboxes that were on the bed of the truck.
and I really appreciate you hanging in there and watching it. I know this one's a long video, and uh, thanks a lot. I'll catch you in the next one.